I be hot all night with the street lights. I get no days off on vacations. You inside, tell me what it be like. The fake love never did change me. I be hot all night with the street lights. I get no days off on vacations. You inside, tell me what it be like. The fake love never did change me. All these people falling off like they dominoes, chilling at the formal in designer clothes. I be politics. What is up, you guys? It's your boy Mike from Balls of Fury. Welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone is having an outstanding day. In today's episode, I wanted to talk to you guys about the importance of actually understanding how ball python genes interact with each other and actually learning what the genes do and what their purpose is as far as when you combine them with other genes. Here at Balls of Fury, guys, we strive to produce the most visually beautiful animals that we possibly can. So every time we invest into a snake or we add a snake or a gene to a certain project, it's for a reason because we've done research on how that gene actually will interact with the combination we're trying to pursue. And we have a background of how that gene actually works and how it influences the look of the snake. So to give you guys an example of what I'm trying to talk about and actually teach you guys about, we got our boy Reaper here. He is a leopard yellow belly ball python, and he is 100% het for pied and hypo. Now, the leopard gene is the example I want to use because it's a pretty easy one to understand and also really has a dramatic effect on how the snake actually looks. Now, the leopard gene is a darkening mutation, and it is also a pattern mutation. The name leopard comes from the pattern that it actually gives to the snake. It kind of gives it that leopard look, and it really, really darkens up the black. And all this flaming up along the sides is coming from the yellow belly gene. So if this guy did not have yellow belly in him, he would be much darker here in these sides. But for this example, guys, I don't have a straight up leopard. But to give you guys an idea, this is the leopard. Now, what I want you guys to understand about ball python genes and how you can actually use them to make beautiful, beautiful offspring is that now that we know the leopard gene is a darkening gene, we can use that to our advantage when we want to put it with something else. And I'll show you guys a combination that the leopard gene works really, really well with and helps to increase the contrast and coloration of the actual mutation. So let's take a look at that snake next. But this is our boy Reaper, you guys. He is absolutely stunning. I love, love the leopard gene, guys. It is a gene that we're incorporating into a lot of our snakes here. So something that I'm really excited to be working with. And I really, really love what it does with the pattern of the animal, too. So what we're looking at here now, guys, is actually albino with the leopard gene. Now, I told you guys the leopard gene is a darkening gene, whereas the albino actually causes the snake to lack melanin, which is black pigment. So when we incorporate the leopard into the albino, what it does is it actually really, really increases the contrast of the snake and helps to really brighten this white coloration because where that white is, is actually where the snake would be black, as you saw on the leopard. Now, also the leopard is creating that really, really awesome pattern on this snake. Got a similar looking pattern to that boy that I showed you guys. That is the leopard influence as well. So guys, it's really, really important that you understand how these genes are going to interact and what to actually pair together to create the coolest possible offspring that you can. Now for these next few example guys, I'm really just going to throw some awesome looking snakes at you and kind of talk about the difference that genes make in them. So right here guys, we have what is called a Batman ball python. Now the Batman ball python is a leopard spot nose clown ball python. As you can see, the leopard is really, really giving it some cool pattern. It's keeping these blacks nice and dark, guys. And the spot nose and clown together, guys, is one of the best, best mutations. The spot nose really, really increases the contrast with the clown mutations, adds a lot of crazy, crazy pattern to it. And we'll kind of give you guys an idea of the direction that we're trying to go with this Batman girl to kind of really increase that contrast even more and really add some dope dope color to this animal because pri primarily it's just mainly a brown and black looking snake with some really cool pattern but what we want to do with this girl is we want to increase the color the contrast and really brighten it so let's show you guys what we're thinking about putting 
with this female. Now over on this side, guys, we have our boy Drake. He is a fire yellow belly spot nose clown. Now these two snakes are pretty similar genetically. They have a lot of the same genes. They have the spot nose and the clown. However, my boy Drake over here, he's got the fire gene as well as yellow belly. And this girl has the leopard gene, which is making her look a little bit different. Now, as you guys can see, look at the difference in coloration that the fire and yellow belly adds with the spot nose and also the difference with the pattern as well. Without that leopard, the pattern is just really, really crazy, not as reduced as the Batman, but the pattern is still really, really cool. You got the yellow belly coming in with those flames, bringing in that orange coloration. Now, what we want to do, guys, is when we actually breed these two snakes together, we want to add that brightness from Drake to this girl right over here. So we get a really nice, high contrasted, beautiful looking snake, man. So I cannot wait to actually pair these two guys together because they're gonna make some incredible looking Batmans and some incredible looking clown combinations. But guys, we did a lot of research on these genes and what they actually do in combinations. And it takes a while to learn this, guys. And it takes a while to visually notice things and as you continue to do it and gain more experience, you'll start to kind of recognize how genes interact with each other. So that's basically the purpose of what we're trying to do when we breed stuff together, you guys. We're trying to breed stuff to create the best looking animals that we can and also extremely rare animals, guys. I mean, the, these two guys are going to make some very rare ball pythons together. They're going to be very beautiful ball pythons, high value investment quality animals. So that's our goals here at Balls of Fury and what we're kind of working and what we're thinking when we're actually going through the process of buying snakes and pairing them up. We're trying to make the coolest looking snakes possible with the coolest paint jobs. Basically like being an artist and, and combining the best colors that you can and the best patterns that you can to create the most visually beautiful looking animal that you can, can produce. So let's take something that's in its base form like this boy right here. He is a lavender albino ball python. Just a regular visual albino, uh, excuse me, lavender albino ball python. The lavender, what it does is it really creates a beautifully bright snake and it brings in that lavender purple coloration to the snake. Now, what we want to do with the lavender, guys, is really increase the contrast of it, make it as beautiful as we possibly can because it is one of the most beautiful muta mutations on its own. However, let's see what genes we could kind of add to it to make it even crazier and even brighter and cooler looking. And boy, did we get lucky today. This girl just recently came out of shed yesterday, so she's looking absolutely phenomenal. But this right here, guys, is a lavender albino combination. So let's think back to the boy that we just showed you, the lavender albino. And let's see what happens when you add Enchi, Confusion, and Leopard to it. Look at the difference in appearance and coloration on this thing. I mean, this thing is like a highlighter yellow. The Enchi is bringing all that pink coloration into it. Um, it's really reducing the pattern quite a bit. The Confusion and the Leopard are also really saturating the coloration. Now, Enchi, guys, is an amazing color-enhancing gene. It works great with a lot of different mutations, but especially the lavender albino because it brings in all that pink coloration within the pattern of this animal, which is really, really beautiful. And then you've got the confusion and the leopard, which are both darkening genes. They also influence the pattern of the snake. Now, the darkening genes, when you incorporate them into lavender albino or regular albino, they really, really saturate the coloration and they really increase the contrast of the snake. Now, in this combination, the contrast really isn't that, that extremely high because we don't have that much white on the snake or pattern on the snake to work with. And that's mainly because the Enchi really reduces the pattern of the animal. Now, with the future breeding of this girl, we still want to make Enchi Lavender stuff because Enchi Lavender stuff, guys, is really, really beautiful. I love the pinks that it brings in. But I think down the road, we need to add some sort of gene into this that's going to increase the contrast or maybe increase the amount of pattern. I'm thinking of maybe putting Spot Nose in this because Spot Nose will really, really whack the pattern out. It'll add a lot of pattern to it. Also, it will kind of tone down the color a little bit and add some more contrast to it so the snake really, really pops when you look at it. Also, guys, we're thinking about adding some yellow belly in there to even 
brighten that color some more, maybe some asphalt, maybe some orange dream. So there's a lot of different avenues we could go with, but what we're thinking guys is how can we make the snake look even better and cooler and how can we make this combination and the offspring look as beautiful as it possibly can while still keeping them extremely rare guys like this is this is a very very rare combination you guys i've maybe only seen a couple of these in existence to be honest with you this is the only one that i know of to my knowledge in existence I'm not sure if the breeder who I purchased her from has some in the vault. It was Justin Kabelka of Canova. I'm sure he's got some crazy stuff in the vault from this project, but I haven't seen anyone else with this actual snake or something similar to it other than him. So it's really, really rare, guys, and that's something that we really like at Balls of Fury. We're trying to work with the rarest and most beautifully vibrant looking snakes that we can, and that's what our goal is when we're actually producing animals and we're actually doing our breeding projects. So guys, since we already used the lavender as kind of an example, we'll stick with that. Also, it's a most of the stuff that I have here is lavender albino stuff. So we'll stick with that for now because I can give you guys the most examples from what we have here at Balls of Fury. But take a look at this, guys. This is a beautiful double recessive combo. This is a dreamsicle. This is a lavender pied. Now, the pied gene is creating that nice white blotching all throughout the snake's body. It's a random amount of blotching. However, the lavender albino is changing the color of the snake, giving it that bright yellow orange color. It's creating those nice deep red eyes and giving the snake that purple head as you guys can see there. Now, what we wanna do with the Dream School stuff is really, really intensify that color, make the contrast as beautiful as we can. Let's see what happens when we actually add something into the Dream School and change the appearance a little bit. Now we have another Dream School here, you guys, but this one is a little bit different. This one also has yellow belly in it. Now they look somewhat similar on the camera, but if the camera will pick it up, I'm not sure if it is, the colors on this snake are much, much deeper oranges. And as you can see, right there, we're kind of getting that deep orange coloration, more so than that dreamsicle. And the yellow belly really creates a lot of that pixelation along the edges of the saddles where it meets with the white. And it's really bringing in some deep, deep, vibrant oranges. We still got that lavender head from the lavender, obviously. But the yellow belly really, really intensifies the coloration of the snake. Now guys, what we wanna do with this girl is to add even more saturation and color to her and really increase the contrast up against the white of that pied. Now pied and lavender guys, they work extremely well together because the pied brings in that white obviously, whereas the lavender is really brightening the coloration and really increasing the contrast of the snake, which is awesome. Then you've got the yellow belly in there, which is really brightening those orange colorations. And what I think we want to add in there is definitely Enchi, you guys. Enchi is going to turn this thing up another a notch. Orange Dream is going to make this thing even more bright. Confusion, guys. Leopard. All those things we plan to incorporate into here. So it's going to be really, really cool to see what we can do with this. But our goal is to definitely make it look as cool as we possibly can and to add as much, much contrast as we possibly can, guys. And remember, when you're producing snakes, you guys, that you're trying to sell, you're going to want to sell things that visually impress people because that's what's going to get your name out there. That's what's going to get people to notice you. Making triple recessives, quadruple recessives is very awesome. I definitely want to do that down the road. However, sometimes with those things, you guys, you don't really get a visually impressive animal right off the rip. You need these incomplete dominants to add in there because... They're going to be what really intensifies the colors, makes the appearance of the animal different, and really is what's going to intensify that contrast. But man, wait till we get those other genes into this double recessive project, man. It's really going to be awesome. And also, guys, I think we might have to add the clown gene into this and make some holy grails. What do you guys think? I think that'd be really cool. It'd be awesome to get some holy grails with some different genes in there, some incomplete dominant genes in there. It'll be really, really dope. But man, what a beautiful snake and what a difference that yellow belly really brings to the table. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope I was able to teach you guys a little bit about what we actually look for when we're investing into snakes as far as their genetics and what our thought process is behind pairing some of these guys up. Now, when it comes to your actual personal collection or your personal breeding plans, guys, or you're just getting started and learning about the different genes, 
I really, really encourage you guys to get on Morph Market. Look at a bunch of different looking combinations. When you see things that you really, really like and you think are very, very beautiful, write down the genes that it has in it and go and research those genes. Research what they actually do and what their actual influence is when you put it into a ball python combination because that's going to help you a lot down the road and it's going to help you make the most beautiful living art that you possibly can. It takes a lot of time and dedication and research to learn all these things, guys. And luckily for us, we're all obsessed with ball pythons here at Balls of Fury. So it really isn't really like work, man. I love looking up these animals, researching the genetics. It really is more of a passion than anything. So it's something that I do in my free time regardless. So I really encourage you guys to research those genetics so you can really figure out what you want to produce and what you want to do. And like I said, guys, not everything is foolproof. You know, there's going to be times where we're working a project here at Balls of Fury and it's something that's never been done before. So we don't actually know what it's going to look like. However, since we know how the genes work and what their actual influence is on the snake's coloration and appearance, we can kind of get an idea of what the potential offspring might look like. And like I said, guys, sometimes you hit on something really, really cool that you weren't expecting from something that you may have never paired together before or hasn't been done before. And sometimes you miss and you produce something that's not that visually impressive. But that's what makes this fun and that's what makes it exciting, guys. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please do me a favor. Smash that like button down below. Smash the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to the channel. Also, guys, drop a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are. What is your thought process when you go out and invest in your snakes or into your breeding project? And what your thoughts are about some of the genes that you want to work with or some of the genes that we kind of showed you guys today that we're working with here at Balls of Fury. I hope you guys have a great night. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.